There are four things that every single woman craves from her man. And the crazy thing is she won't tell you what they are. Without these four things, you're doomed to a lifeless marriage, lacking intimacy, sex, or love. However, when you implement these four things, you'll have a relationship where your partner looks at you with appreciation, respect, and desire. So in today's podcast episode, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly what these four things are and how you can use them today. So if you want more sex, more love, more appreciation, that spark you had at the beginning, then make sure you implement this right away. First thing that every woman craves from a successful man is being in control. It is fascinating how many men, and I used to be one of them, are successful in one area, providing and making money, but they're failing in the other areas of their life. They're losing control of the stress that they go through every single day. They lose control when they get triggered by something in the relationship. They explode like a ticking time bomb, taking it out on their loved ones, their children, or even their team members at work. So many men lose control of their thoughts, feelings, actions, and reactions. So what we're gonna be sharing with you in today's podcast doesn't just fix your marriage or relationship, it goes across the board as a father, as a leader in your business, as a man on planet Earth. Let's talk about this idea of control. So I used to do the exact same thing about five years ago. Rosie and I, my current wife and future wife for the rest of my life, were really struggling because I was working hard in the business, making money and providing, but every single day was full of pressure and stress. And that pressure and stress would come home to me, to my wife, where if there were dishes in the sink or the house was a mess, I'd lose my shit. If she would get upset at me for coming home late, I'd lose my shit, I would lose control. I'd get angry and triggered, I'd get frustrated, I'd get emotional. And because as men, we aren't taught how to process our emotions, I would then let that lash out towards the people I cared about. Now, as a man, there are four key areas you must be in control of. They are your thoughts, what you think up here, your feelings, the emotions that go through your body, your actions, the things you do, and also the things you don't do, because that's an inaction. And then your reactions, how you react to stimulus outside of you, your partner, business, taxes, traffic. Those are things we react to that are external to us. Now, women, specifically women, when they're with a man, when they're with a partner, what they look for is strength. What they look for is stoicism. They look for a masculine man who in the face of danger, whether it's a lion attacking us, whether it's a man pulling up with a gun, whether it's a burglary, any danger, any threat to the family unit, to the relationship gets to be neutralized by that man. However, we don't live in a society where there's fucking lions and people pulling up with guns trying to shoot us. We live in relatively a safe place if you're watching this in Western civilization. So now there aren't as many threats as there were before. The threats that we have as men are the stress of business, hiring and firing employees, putting out fires at work, coming home to the house being a mess. In reality, when you think about these things, none of them are actually that stressful if you're a man who's in control. But when I wasn't in control, I'd have the stress of work and the thoughts I'd lose control of. I'd get down and depressed. I'd feel like there was no point to it all. I'd tell myself a story that it was too hard or I didn't have enough time. Then I'd feel anxiety from all the pressure that I had inside of myself. I'd feel frustrated that my business wasn't growing fast enough. I'd feel upset because I wasn't providing as much money and freedom for my family as I wanted. So already in that area, my thoughts and feelings had disappeared. They turned into negative thoughts and feelings. So I'd come home and my actions and reactions would match the negative thoughts and feelings. I'd reach for alcohol to sedate at the end of the day. I'd react to my wife saying something like, you said you were gonna be home earlier. Instead of acknowledging her and saying, you know what, you're right, I worked late and I said I would come home earlier, I'd blow up, I'd get angry. Every time I did that, my wife, my partner would see a weak man, a man who didn't have his shit together, a man who was incapable of staying in control. Now you gotta understand the perception of everyone in your life, but specifically your partner, when they see you like this, if you're a man who one day is calm and smiling and happy, then the next day is blowing up like a ticking time bomb. He's yelling at his team. He's supporting his team. He's yelling at his kids. He's supporting his kids. He's getting angry at his wife. He's arguing with her. He's not arguing. 
You get into an argument, then you wanna have sex with her without fucking dealing with the problem. That means you're constantly losing control. You're inconsistent and that creates a perception of how your partner sees you. I cannot stress this enough. To be a man who has a great marriage, a great business, a man who's a leader and role model for the people in his life, you must learn how to take control of your thoughts, feelings, actions, and reactions. If you don't learn how to do that, then the world has power over you. Everything outside of you ex is external. The only thing you can control is you. And when your partner sees you in control, despite all the stress, despite all the pressure, despite her being a bitch, despite kids being difficult, despite business being stressful, when she sees that happen, despite the problems, she sees you in control, she will develop a deep level of respect, admiration, and desire for you. Because most men don't operate this way. Most men are victims. Most men pretend like they're successful. But they've really just lost control of their time, their triggers, their thoughts, their feelings. They don't have much control at all. They are victims to the reality around them, which leads us to our second point, which is just as important as control. And that second thing is called capacity. As a man, you have a certain degree of capacity to handle the things that go on for you. There is the stress of work and providing for your family. There's the stress of making money and putting food on the table. There's the stress of trying to find the time for yourself and juggle all the balls and wear all the hats. If you're a husband, if you're a father, if you're a business owner or a high performance man, you're trying to balance these areas, your health, your wealth, and your relationships. And because so many men lose control, it also means they lose control of that balance. They're imbalanced because all their time goes into work and providing, which means less time for physical health, less time to eat well and go to the gym, less time to dedicate to family or your partner. More and more time goes into one area, wealth, every other area gets sacrificed. That means that we don't have the capacity to have balance. We don't have the ability to handle all the weight on the bar. Think about what it means to be successful in a relationship, in a business, and in life. It means expansion. It means growth, which is why we start families. We want to expand. We want to grow. But every time you expand and grow, you hire a new team member. You have another child. You work longer hours. It's like putting more weight on a barbell. If you go to the gym and you just have an empty barbell, 20 kilos, 45 pounds, that weight's not that heavy. No matter how weak you are, most men can lift that weight. But then you put some plates on each side and that weight suddenly doubles. Then you put some more plates on the side and that weight doubles and you put some more plates and you get to a point where instead of having a 20 uh, kilo bar, 45 pound bar, it's now a 200 kilo bar, 440 pound bar. Now you're carrying this bar the entire time. Your wife is watching, your team is watching. They don't care that you've got that weight on your shoulders because they don't have that same weight. They're just watching you. They're watching how you show up. They're watching how in control you are. As a powerful man, a man who is desired by his wife, a man who is respected by his team and his children, a man who is a role model, you've got to upgrade your capacity so that that weight doesn't feel so damn heavy. Think about why we lose control. We lose control because the weight gets too fucking heavy. We start to collapse under the pressure of being a modern day man, and that collapse causes us to lose control. So by definition, if we need to be a man who's in control, if every woman craves that, a man who's got it, he's got it covered, he's fucking got this, no matter what, he shows up, he steps up, he's a leader. The only way to be in control, the only way to be that man is to become stronger. It's to become stronger just like going to the gym, you lift weights, your bicep gets stronger from doing enough reps, you put in the reps day in, day out, to make the weight lighter, to lighten the load, to be able to handle more stress, to be able to handle more pressure without losing control, to be able to deal with problems in your workday without bringing the home, to be able to balance your life and be healthy in your body, bulletproof in your mind, while also having a great business, to be able to have a great business and a healthy body while also having a great relationship. That's fucking hard to do. So many men struggle to have balance in their health wealth and relationships, and it comes back to this idea of capacity. If you're listening, you won't see this, but if you're watching this on YouTube, this is a coffee cup. Now, if this coffee cup gets full, it overflows. Now, in life, you're always gonna fill your cup. 
What we need to do is make this cup bigger so it can handle more liquid. It's the exact same as a man. If you're currently struggling to handle everything that's going on, you have two options. You lighten the load, which means you're less successful, you provide less, or you get stronger so you can carry that load. Think about the areas in your life currently that overwhelm you, that cause you to lose control. You can be damn sure that those areas are affecting the relationship with your partner. So if you wanna give your partner what she truly desires, which by the way means she's gonna give you way more of what you desire, sex, intimacy, respect, appreciation, you've got to become a man who's able to increase his capacity for stress, for pressure, for the world itself, because the world is fucking hard. And that allows you to stay in control because you're a man who has the capacity to be unfuck withable. Which leads us to the third thing that every single woman craves from her man, but unfortunately she won't tell you. And that third thing is called communication. Communication truly is the key to connection. As a powerful man, as a leader, communication is your greatest weapon. Think about all the people that you've listened to throughout your life that you continue to listen to. Perhaps you've watched this podcast or listened to this podcast for more than a few episodes. There's only one reason for that. It's the fact that I've been able to communicate with my tonality, with my words, with my energy in a way that keeps you engaged, that keeps you wanting more. Whether you like it or not, we live in an attention economy, meaning attention is money. And if you want the attention of your partner, positive attention, then you've got to be able to communicate in a way where she feels understood, she feels appreciated, she feels wanted and supported. Because if she feels those things, she's going to give them back to you. Think about Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr. All the guys right now that you listen to on the internet, they communicate with you in a way that makes you feel connected to them. So if you're lacking connection in your relationship, if there's less intimacy, less sex, less appreciation, love or respect, you can be damn sure that your partner doesn't feel like you can communicate effectively with her. And a lot of men struggle with this. I remember a few years ago, I struggled to tell my partner what my day was like. She used to try, support me in the business. How was your day today? It was fine. That would be my response. Because as a man, I wasn't taught how to be vulnerable. I wasn't taught how to share what's going on for me. I wasn't taught how to ask questions and find out what was going on for her. And this is what caused my relationship to break down seven years ago when my partner came home and said, I don't love you anymore. My communication was terrible. My partner said to me six months prior to leaving, I don't think this relationship's gonna work out. My response, because I was terrible at communication was, don't say things like that. What I could have done, what I should have done was said, what do you mean by that? Tell me more and had an open and honest discussion about what was going on for her, what she was thinking, what she was feeling so I could work through it with her. Now I'm grateful for the experience. It meant that I found my current wife, Rosie. I have a beautiful daughter, a beautiful business, a beautiful life. I'm grateful for the experience, but I had to learn the hard way through heartbreak that communication is the key to connection. How do you know if your communication is good or not? Well, are you currently in a relationship where you're constantly arguing? There's silent treatment. You're on opposite ends of the couch with nothing to talk about or connect on. You feel like you're roommates instead of soulmates. You feel like you're not intimate enough. You're, you're constantly at each other's throats or you just don't feel like you can talk to that person, that's a sign of shitty communication. It's the same in business. If your team is not performing well, they don't know what their targets are, they're not hitting their targets, they're not reliable, you can be damn sure that you have a role to play and you're shit at communication. Communication is such a powerful skill that so many men do not figure out or master. Now, how do you know if you have great communication? When you have great communication, you're able to make your partner feel understood. You're able to make her feel like you support her, like you know what's going on for her. You're able to assess her emotions once a month when she's on her period. You know what to do and how to communicate. You know how to communicate when she's stressed. You know how to communicate and ask great questions when she's upset at you. You know how to communicate calmly without losing control, without reacting when she's pissed off. You're able to diffuse a negative situation. You're able to give her what she needs in terms of conversation so that she gives you what she needs. And that is a true mark of a powerful man. Every woman craves this. She craves a man that can talk to her, that can be open with her, that can be vulnerable with her. Not a pussy, not a man who cries and complains. A man who can say, you know what? I had a really rough fucking day. 
but I'm grateful to be here with you. A man who finishes his day, no matter how stressed or upset he is, he goes downstairs, sees a mess in the living room or the kitchen and walks over, puts his hand on her shoulder and says, how can I help you? A man who communicates verbally, non-verbally, a man who is in control, who's upgraded his capacity and who knows how to communicate. So the question you got to ask yourself today is, are you lacking results in any of your relationships with your wife, with your kids, with your team? If the answer is yes, you got to fucking build that skill set of communication. When you don't build the skill set, it causes divorce, broken families, broken businesses. You lose millions of dollars. When you become an expert communicator, however, you make millions of dollars. You get financial freedom. You get a great relationship with the people in your life. You get that thing that women crave, which is a man who knows how to communicate effectively every single day, which leads us to the fourth and final point, which makes all these other three irrelevant if you don't implement it correctly, which is why I'm about to share it with you. Make sure you take note. This fourth and final thing is called consistency. Women crave a man who is consistent. Think about the people in your life. If your partner is loving and supportive and nurturing and happy, and then the next day she's at your throat, she's pissed off that you came home late, and she's bickering or pulling up shit that is annoying, nagging you. How do you feel? You feel upset. You feel triggered. You feel like this person's just being nasty or being a bitch. Now, if she's constantly up and down like a yo-yo, that means she's inconsistent and you start to resent her. You start to not know which version of your partner you're going to get. If there's somebody in your business who's crushing it, doing well, and then their results drop, they cost you time, they cost you money. That's upsetting. That's triggering. That's when we lose control. It's the exact same with ourselves. We have to be consistent as men. And this is what something so many men struggle with. I've coached over a thousand guys in our programs. We've coached guys who make $200 million a year, very successful men, but they're so inconsistent with how they show up for the people in their life. If you're up and down with your moods, if you're triggered one day, happy the next, if you're depressed one day, happy the next, if you're stressed one day, calm the next, great for those moments where you're in control but it doesn't mean anything if you're inconsistent not only do you need to be in control of your thoughts feelings actions and reactions you need to consistently be in control 99 percent of the time most men don't think that's possible it absolutely is we call it unfuckwithable teflon don control consistently but also capacity you've got to be able to handle the weight of the bar consistently carrying it for days, weeks at a time without dropping the bar, without losing control. You've got to have the capacity that's consistent to be unfuckwithable. And you've got to consistently communicate. You've got to consistently be able to find out what's going on for the people in your life, your partner, your team, and also consistently be able to communicate that. Consistency is so fucking important. Are you a man who shows up and steps up every single fucking day? Are you a man who shows up and steps up, whether it's stressful or not? Are you a man who's healthy physically and mentally, no matter what's going on for you? The word here that goes after consistency is despite. I am a man who's in control despite what's going on, despite the stress, despite my wife being upset, despite my children, despite all that, I'm in control. That's consistency. I'm a man who has the capacity, the strength, the power to handle anything that comes my way, despite insert problem here. And I'm a man who communicates with my partner, with my team, with my children, with myself, despite what's going on. Now, when you become this man who's consistent, it's going to completely change the way that the people in your life perceive you. Everyone in your life has a view of how they see you. They might think of you as grumpy dad, angry husband, shitty boss, They've got a view of how they see you. They've got versions of you that they perceive. Everyone looks at you through their own lens. Do they look at you through a positive lens or a negative lens? When you become consistent with being in control, with upgrading your capacity, with communicating well, and you do that for a week and then a month and then a year, the people in your life start to go, hmm, something's going on with this guy. And initially they don't believe it. They're like, he's full of shit. He said he's gonna change before. But when you've been doing this for six months or a year and you show up as this guy, they get to a point where they go, holy shit, who is this guy? And they start to really look up to that person, admire them, respect them. 
This is where so many women start to desire their husband again, just like they did at the beginning. But it begins with you as a man becoming consistent. And the reason this is so difficult is because so many men don't have the accountability, they don't have the plan, they don't have the support to actually be this guy. I'm gonna walk you through how to fix that in a second. But before I do that, let's recap these four areas, these four things that every single woman craves. And I guarantee she hasn't told you them in the way that I just have. So first we have being in control of your thoughts, feelings, actions, and reactions, no matter what. We have upgrading your capacity so you can handle the pressure and stress of work, kids, family, and be in control no matter what. Number three, we have communication, communicating well with her, communicating well with everyone else. And number four, being consistent despite what's going on, showing up and stepping up as the leader and man the people in your life deserve. Now, if you struggle to achieve any of these four things, then there are three key elements you're probably missing. The first one is a plan. Most men don't have a plan to achieve everything I just shared with you. You need to know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. The second thing is most men have no accountability. I know in my business, I hold my team accountable, but who holds me accountable? Who holds you accountable? Every professional athlete, even actors, people that are high up and successful, they have coaches. And number three is most men just don't have the tools or the education to do the things I shared with you. What are the tools to communicate better? What are the tools to be in control? What are the tools to upgrade my capacity and become unfuckwithable? So if you're lacking the plan, the tools in education or the accountability, that's where exactly the empowered man comes in. We've coached over a thousand men on how to fix their marriages, reconnect with their children and find work-life balance. What does that mean? Being successful in every area of your life. If you'd like to learn how to do that, go to the first link down below in the description and you'll be able to fill out a quick quiz and book a coaching session with my Empowered Man team. And on that session, we'll literally build your custom Empowered Man roadmap on how to be desired and wanted by your wife, how to have these four things that she craves. So if you want a better marriage, a better business, a better life, go down below right now and book a coaching session with our Empowered Man team. I hope you got value for this. I'll see you for the next episode of the Empowered Man podcast.